The Taliban announces a ban on harvesting poppy plants typically used in producing opium and other drugs like heroin and morphine. Farmers who continue to grow poppy plants can be jailed and have their crops burned. The Taliban has also outlaw outlawed the transportation and trade of alcohol, rules that are reminiscent of the Taliban's previous reign back in the 1990s. And joining us now to discuss is Charles Ramsey, Senior Fellow for the South and Southeast Asia and Middle East Action Teams at the Religious Freedom Institute. He is also a resident scholar at the Baylor University Institute for the Studies of Religion. Charles, welcome. Great to be with you. I want to talk a little bit more about the ban, but first, I want to touch on the ongoing unrest in Afghanistan. Today, a grenade was thrown into a mosque, wounding six people. And earlier this week, there was an explosion that killed one person and then wounded nearly 60 others. Uh, what more do you know about these acts of violence, and what do you think it signals? Afghanistan continues to be a very dangerous place. Uh, people are trying to get on with their life, trying to understand the new situation, but events like this uh, remind them that there's a long way uh, ahead, a lot of work left to do. Uh, the Taliban, of course, is having to communicate to people into the world that they are an effective government, that they can take control. And right now, a lot of what they're going to do is try to communicate to the global community that they are a force to be reckoned with. So they are going to, uh, you know, stop uh, the sale of alcohol and uh, the poppy production. Yes, there are real reasons for that, but it's also to communicate a sense of control and stability to the international community. Attacks on mosques like this uh, are, are real threats to stability and undermine their leadership. So the uh, the news today was that this was somehow related to crime, that someone was trying to rob the money market. Uh, the, the mosque is, is a beautiful central mosque in the town. It's a symbol of, of community and, uh, and really a central place of worship. And so an attack there can demoralize and, and give the picture that their grip is not as strong as it wants to be. Now, of course, they have other players, such as ISIS, who have a different ideology and are wanting to keep a grip or keep part of their uh, position of strength in the country, which is a threat to the Taliban. Um, you know, you touched on that ban, and I want to go back to that again. Um, but why do you think that's significant? I mean, what type of impact do you think it ultimately could have on the country? Well, access to that kind of money can destabilize a region and can remove loyalty. So it's it's a moral stand. They're saying we, we can stop uh, drug production, which the United States and its forces never could succeed in doing. So look at us. We're a moral force, and we're, we're going to exert power here and show that we can do it. But it's also trying to stop the flow of cash uh, that is associated with that industry. And we have to realize that um, it was enough of a supply chain to strengthen uh, the Taliban when they needed access to it. And they don't want to allow that avenue for their opponents or for those who would want to threaten uh, their control. Yeah, and as we know, the economy in Afghanistan is, is really in turmoil right now, uh, so much that the United Nations, I understand, is trying to raise over $4 billion in aid for the people of Afghanistan. That said, um, if that money is raised, I mean, what do you think the chances are that the Afghan people will actually receive that aid? It's hard to say. Right now, that is, uh, it sounds like a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not. It's not enough to solve Afghanistan's problems. It's not enough to feed Afghanistan's hungry. There are real and very pressing needs there. And we want to continue as an international community to be involved. But I, I think, again, those funds are going to be tied to uh, political um, strings. They're going to be tied to relationships and they're related to affirming the position of the government and to creating diplomatic ties. And I'm just not sure that we're at that place yet. Under the U.S. government is saying we're not at that place yet. But at the same time, it's important to realize that there is active trade going on through the informal sector. So it's not like there's not money coming into Afghanistan and going out. A lot of the Afghan economy is on the informal, uh, operates through informal means. And so there are billions of dollars in trade happening through fuel and commercial goods and food items that are coming across those very porous borders. Afghanistan is sometimes called uh, the heart of Asia and because so many passageways go right through there. And so I don't think that, th that releasing this fun these funds are going to make the difference that we hope it will be. 
uh, that they hope they'll accomplish. Uh, but it would signify to the Taliban government that we want to engage and we want to be in a process of coming back to the table and figuring out how to move forward in this very complex situation. Well, Charles, thank you so much for weighing in. We really appreciate your time today. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much.